Welcome to On The Set, I'm Jeannie. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be in a pageant? Have you ever wondered what it was like for somebody who is Miss Massachusetts, Mrs. Massachusetts, there's lots of different titles. Have you ever wondered? Well today we're going to answer all your questions and hopefully you may even want to consider it. So I'd like you to welcome my first guest. Jane Marshall. She was Mrs. Massachusetts 2010. Welcome to On the Set, Jane. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. You have some beautiful, very beautiful mm -hmm. things here to show us. This is your ribbon. My banner, yes. Banner. Mm -hmm. And um, so you're not wearing that today, but do you use it, use it when you go and when you were doing things? Yes, I, was, and events. I absolutely did. I was Mrs. Massachusetts International 2010, mm -hmm. so I had an incredible year. And this is a representation of the title, and I would wear it wherever I could mm -hmm. um, to my public appearances, to my charity events. Um, it definitely gave me the opportunity to have a microphone, having the title to be able to talk about my platform as well as bring awareness to other platforms for other people. And now you have something else to show I us. Do. A beautiful, this is a beautiful crown. crown that I was awarded as well with the title. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of fun to be able to wear this. Um, the little girls would love to try mm -hmm. it on. So it's definitely a nice trophy to be able to have and all the memories that it holds with it. And you get to keep I your do. crown? I do. So is mm -hmm. it diamonds? No, it's no, not. Okay. It is Swarovski <laughs> crystals and rhinestones. So mm -hmm. it definitely um, has a special place in my heart. It's beautiful. Thank you. So tell us about the doors. I mean, I understand that that being Mrs. Massachusetts opened so many doors, mm -hmm. but I also think that after speaking with you before the show started, that it also opened your heart and, and healed some, some very mm -hmm. serious wounds for you. Mm -hmm. So what kind of doors did it open? Well, I was a pageant contestant back in my teens and my miss years. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like many years ago now. It was something that my mom and I used as um, time to spend together. We, it was a hobby of mine. She used to help me get ready. She was my biggest cheerleader. And in 2007, I lost my mom to breast cancer. And mm -hmm. after that, I got married. I became a mom myself. And I decided that I wanted to get back into pageantry mm -hmm. as a way to get back into shape, first of all, after having my daughter. So I competed in my first Mrs. Pageant in 2008, mm -hmm. um, eight weeks after my daughter was born. So that was a great wow. experience and gave me a lot of confidence. But even though I didn't win that pageant, mm -hmm. it gave me the opportunity to realize that I could possibly do something more mm -hmm. by having a title. And that was to spread the awareness of breast cancer awareness and the importance of early detection and to share my mom's story because I think losing her to breast cancer and sharing her story mm -hmm. could help a lot of people out there. What kind of charities did you do? I had so much work. I was mm -hmm. able to work with Little General Hospital. Mm -hmm. um, the year that my daughter was born, I participated in their Little General Hospital Team Walk for Cancer Care. Mm -hmm. So the following year when I had the title, I reached out to them and I said I wanted to volunteer with them. And that email led to me be, being chosen as the honorary mm -hmm. chairperson of their Team Walk for Cancer Care. So I was mm -hmm. able to raise funds, awareness, go out with the hospital staff, mm -hmm. work with the cancer patients who are being treated at Little General Hospital. Um, and just being aware of what the hospital does for the patients from the Merrimack mm -hmm. Valley area. Well, some of the pictures that I, I've seen of yours really touched my heart. I mean, each one of them must have a story. There's it a does. little girl, I think, that we're posting that, you know, actually lost. She was a mm -hmm. gymnast. Yes. And she lost all of her limbs. Mm -hmm. And Tell me about that. About You're that. speaking about Bella Tucker. She's uh, eight, well, she's now nine years old, but she was eight years old when she got hit by the streptococcus pneumonia Easter weekend. Wow. And that wound up uh, bringing her to the emergency room, and it wasn't sure whether or not she would be alive after that situation. Um, she woke up to facing the fact that she had lost all four of her limbs. Mm -hmm. She was a little girl who loved gymnastics. She mm -hmm. loved to swim, uh, be with her friends, her brothers, sisters. Um, and it just gives you an inspiration and hope when you see an eight-year-old mm -hmm. girl full of life. And one of the first questions that she asked was whether she would live. And wow. I think hearing that story from her parents firsthand when I visited her at Children's Hospital mm -hmm. and to see the strength and determination that she had. We um, take things for granted. Oh my lot. gosh, it's, you know, and you our, know, our, our kids fingers, too. our hands, being able to walk, you know, all the things that we use our hands for. It's just amazing. And to think that this little girl was a gymnast mm -hmm. and to have 
those fundamental tools taken away from you mm -hmm. um, and how do you go on with life after that I don't think there's a lot of adults that would know how to deal with that and just to see an eight-year-old have so much strength and determination it just warms your heart I was able to watch her do her physical therapy at Children's Hospital mm -hmm. uh, with her father and her grandmother and her doctors and it was just amazing to see mm -hmm. how much strength she had and she said I will swim again, I will do gymnastics mm -hmm. again, and we actually still have a shoe shopping date that we have to go on, but she's just an amazing so she's little just girl. Turned, she's teaching people, she this is. Is, sounds like, and she's not feeling sorry for herself. Not at all. And she's turning her greatest weakness right mm -hmm. now into her greatest strength, which she'll probably do more than mm -hmm. us, both of us put together. Absolutely. It sounds like de um, determination. Yeah, I had the chance to visit her before I went out to nationals, mm -hmm. and then the weekend after after I came back from nationals, I got a chance to visit her at Children's Hospital again. And actually, on that visit, I brought my husband with me, and he was just in awe of wow. how strong she was and how much will and determination she had to really get out there and get back to life as a reality. And just to see her family bound, bind against mm -hmm. her, it was just amazing. So, well, what other mm -hmm. journey has this taken you on, being Mrs. Massachusetts? I had the chance to go to Chicago and compete with 51 other women for the national title of Mrs. International. Oh, so you're continuing on for other co competitions then? Well, that was that was the Nationals in 2010, mm -hmm. and that was just an incredible opportunity because I met so many women from all across the country as mm -hmm. far as Australia and Canada as well, and we just had the week of our lives. I had never been to Chicago, mm -hmm. and it was just an amazing experience. I've met a lot of girls who have become like sisters to me. We share okay. a lot of the same experiences. With the Mrs. International program, we had to have our platforms, mm -hmm. and mine was breast cancer awareness and the importance of early detection. Um, on top of the platform of the National Pageant, was the Go Red for Women Foundation with the American Heart Association. Okay. So we got to share our stories and we got to know a lot about mm -hmm. one another. Um, there was a lot of women who had gone through the same things that I did, losing a parent. Uh, there were some people who had lost children. There were some people who had been diagnosed with cancers or other diseases themselves. So we really got to share in our experiences. So that was one of the biggest roads that this opportunity led me to. Let's talk about the stereotype because mm -hmm. We, you know, people feel that there's beauty involved and competition about beauty, and that it, that perhaps that uh, being in a pageant, you're vain more, you know. But it's none of that. It's hard work. It's hard work. You're competing. It's it, there's a health benefit to it. Mm -hmm. Where you said that you wanted to get fit. Yes. You know, there's always that swimsuit competition in some mm -hmm. of the pageants, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. In my pageant, the Mrs. International pageant, there was a fitness portion. So we got to make a choice of either a one-piece or a two-piece aerobic gear with low white sneakers. So there wasn't that um, swimsuit competition, but there are fitness. other competitions that are right. swimsuit competition. But one or the other, it's still regarding your body, regarding health and fitness. And, health and, and confidence, too. It, absolutely. It's helping not you know, in a vain way, mm -hmm. but in a confident, you know, and, and girls need that. Mm -hmm. They need to feel confident, but using it for the better, for being, you know, good, for helping for, with events and charity and fundraisers mm -hmm. and things like that. Absolutely. I mean, it's, you have to be intelligent and, and fit. You do, because you get put out there into situations where you're asked your opinion, right. uh, you're asked about your platform, so it's not something that you can just enter into and mm -hmm. not know what you're talking about, especially if you are representing a platform. And I just learned so much about even different charitable mm -hmm. organizations. I'd never known about the Go Red for Women program, mm -hmm. which heart disease is one of the largest killers of women in across the world you know so to be educated about that and things that we can do in our lives to eat healthy to work out to get exercises into our lifestyle because that's so important to be able to combat those issues mm -hmm. um, you know with cancer awareness and you know meeting people like Bella I never knew that a streptococcus pneumonia could affect a child so much um, I've met so many people who have had so many disabilities and disadvantages and to learn about that and having the social social media network and to be able to post those situations that I was in meeting those people it brings more awareness to those causes which was incredible for me because all of a sudden I would hear from people that I knew in my past either I went to school with or I competed with earlier I know somebody who has that so it was a really great opportunity to learn that there's so many people who are affected by so many different things that we're not even aware of Jane what is your viewpoint on children being in pageants and you know they're there's a lot of controversy about that. Mm -hmm. What is your viewpoint? 
I personally don't like the glitzy pageants. Um, I think that children should really look like children. I have a two and a half year old at home and I absolutely adore the way that she looks right now. And seeing how she's changed over the two years is absolutely incredible to me. And I don't want to speed up that process any more than I have to because life in general speeds the growing up process and they change every single day. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe that a child should get spray tanned or should get fake nails or have what they call flippers put into their mouth and have hair extensions flippers? put in. Flippers? What is a flipper? Flippers are basically... I really fake, must be out of it. They're fake know. teeth um, to fill oh in God. the gaps of children losing their teeth yeah. or their baby teeth. Um, so yeah, and they cost I think like $200, $300 for a pair. Wow. So yeah. the the moms usually are very involved. They in, are. They are. They're even making reality shows about it. They so. are. There is a show called Toddlers and Tears, and it's so funny because a lot of people ask me, is your little girl going to get involved in pageants? And, you know, if down the road she wants to, absolutely. It's a great avenue to learn how to interview, teach social development, uh, be able to speak in front of people, share your platform, a talent if you have a talent. Um, but I don't want her to get involved until she understands what it it's all about mm -hmm. um, you know and I love her being a child mm -hmm. but what's right for one person may not be right for another person so it's a choice and if people want to do that then that's great but my choice is for my little girl to look like a little girl and there are natural children's pageants where oh, they require great. that there's no makeup there's a great New England system uh, the kudo pageants wow. where they do actually have natural children's divisions so I think that's fabulous that because greatness. kids should be kids I, I hope all of our viewers heard that loud yeah. and clear. You know, we should probably have more, more of that. You know, more Absolutely. involvement in that because it's um, like a talent show. Mm -hmm. But you know, even but it's um, what do I want to say? Competition. It's it's. Um, created more, you know, it's like yeah. structured, that's yep. the word I'm trying to I mean, to pageantry in a form it's is structured. kind of like a sport, you mm -hmm. know, and kids get involved in sports exactly. in an early age to excel in their talents, and the great thing about pageantry is that they have talent portions, whether a child plays piano, can sing, or dance, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can definitely get them involved, and how much you want to get them involved, and how much do you want to change their appearance, that's your choice, but there are the natural pageants, and there are the glitz pageants, mm -hmm. so it's a choice for everybody, and mm -hmm. they do the same thing for the team girls and even up to the Miss Girls. So. so if I was a fly on the wall, okay, and you're going through the process, mm -hmm. so you're in a pageant, tell me about that. You're, you're sent to a location and then what happens? As far as the general competition or preparing? Uh, everything. You, you're, you're in a hotel, mm -hmm. right, and your hours are a grueling or what does that They mean? are. When you go to a national pageant, you mm -hmm. are basically getting up first thing in the morning, you go down and fuel yourself up with breakfast, um, a lot of healthy things, and then you are either going on personal appearances with all the rest of the contestants uh, through the host city. You then go to... And they watch you? Oh, absolutely. The, we have chaperones. Okay. Even at the Mrs level we had our chaperones because there could be something that happens to a girl when we're in Chicago it was extremely warm so we mm -hmm. had to reach out and say you know we're feeling dehydrated we're feeling tired we need some shelter we need some okay. water things like that and you're also being um, judged at that point when you're no, out on no we were not being judged at that point that's just you know basically touring around the city um, doing some publicity work for the city doing publicity work for the pageant itself mm -hmm. making people aware that we're mm -hmm. there the competition was going on um, we would then and go to rehearsals. The rehearsals took up so much of our day, but you want to perfect the production number, you know, and mm -hmm. a lot of us, myself included, weren't dancers, so we needed to do a lot of run-throughs, but it really is a lot of fun. I see. Is it televised as well? The national pageant was not televised, but mm -hmm. they do have DVDs that you can purchase on the website. And, and they have an audience mm -hmm. there, Absolutely. Too. We probably had about 150 people there in the audience, mm -hmm. so you're in a large auditorium style setting mm -hmm. on a large stage with uh, lighting and everything, so it's definitely a huge production. Mm -hmm. All right, now this is a big question. Mm -hmm. I really want to know, what was it like when you heard your name that you won? I actually, when I won the Mrs. Massachusetts title, we don't have a state director, so I had to interview for the pageant, which mm -hmm. took about three months mm -hmm. for me to find out. And it was just wow. as exciting to interview and be chosen because I knew that even though I wasn't competing live on stage, that what I had to say was really important. And it was like, oh my gosh, and to get that crown and banner was incredible. Um, when I competed in the Miss Division many years ago, I did win the title of Miss Massachusetts Venus USA, mm -hmm. and it's a 
feeling like no other because you know that all your they all hard cry work, and yep. they go ah and they scream and, and that like, is what was it like for you it, it was incredible mm -hmm. because i remember my heart pounding you know you stand there and you're holding hands with the other girl mm -hmm. and you know a lot of people watch on tv and they think ah oh, those emotions aren't real but it really is because when you've worked that hard to get to that point and you're down to that final two or you're chosen as that winner you know that all your hard work's paid off mm -hmm. and you just can't i remember looking out to my mom and being like oh my god we did it we did it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. your team. She was she was my champion. So And when you're in a pageant, you're also making friends even though you're mm -hmm. competing with them. Yes. So are they still your friends? Absolutely, and Facebook has been an incredible way for us wow. to keep in touch. Um, I am really good friends with Mrs. Iowa, with Mrs. Uh, Tennessee, with Mrs. Florida. Uh, Tennessee and Florida just competed a week ago in the same pageant that we competed a year ago, and they placed in the top five, and we are all on our computers. We're Facebooking back and forth wow. your and cheering each other on. They are like sisters, you mm -hmm. know, and there's a couple of us who were only children, so we could really relate to one another mm -hmm. and say, you know, we are sisters. Even though we don't see each other every single day, right. talk every single day, we think of each other often, especially when things come up in our life. So I have over 50 sisters right now, and it's, it, it's great. I know some people have made public, huge public mistakes, and is that something that you're, that you're always aware of, you know, being, making sure you do everything right? Mm -hmm. Is that something... That, that other girls are aware of? Or? As an adult, I think, you know, you have a different perspective on life and, you know, going through growing up and in different situations, mm -hmm. you're more aware of knowing that you have to lead your life in a certain way because mm -hmm. you never know what's going to come back and haunt you. And um, I've met a lot of girls and when you look at their Facebook profiles, you see some inappropriate pictures and I try to guide them and tell them, you know what, those are things that you might not want to post because down the road, whether you're going for a job interview or, you know, your parents or family members may see that, it's something that you never want to be embarrassed for. I, I always, a saying that I really like is live your life as if everything will eventually be known. Because mm -hmm. one day it could be. Absolutely. So that's a good way, you know, good practice to, mm -hmm. you know, you know, we all have secrets, but, you know, just in case, you know, just live your life. As, yeah, as we're not perfect and everybody's going exactly. to make a mistake, but just try to be cautious mm -hmm. of what gets out there because you never know when somebody may misuse information that you put out there mm -hmm. or pictures. So, you know, just be careful and especially with underage drinking and things like that, you know, I try to tell the girls, just be really careful with what you mm -hmm. do and what you're posting. Oh. You, you would be a great mentor then. Is that what you're doing also for other girls? That I, I try to be. I think, you know, being a mom, it's, you know, I'm trying to teach my daughter, but I also learn from the teen girls. Um, I had a great opportunity to become a sponsor for one of my newfound daughters, mm -hmm. basically, in pageantry okay. for her confirmation. And that said a lot to me because she chose me to share in her special day, and it was such an honor to get that. So I'd like to look at myself as being a role model, um, but I also learned from them because that's going to be my daughter someday. So That's right. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about some of the pictures that you gave okay. us. Um, let's see, we're going to look at a picture right now. That picture right there with your banner. Yep, that was shortly after I won, and um, that's a very proud yeah. moment because having wearing that, it represents my life, and it also represents the story of my mom and the journey of why I took this journey. Um, you know, sharing her story and breast cancer awareness, it just opened so many doors mm -hmm. for me to reach out to people and you know, talk about how important it is to take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a very important picture to me. Wow, was your mother in a pageant before? She, no, she never was. Um, I actually got encouraged to enter into pageant when I was in my high school years. Um, I was kind of tall, kind of awkward, um, never knew anything about makeup, about fashion or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So people said you should get into modeling because of your height, and that's how I got involved in pageantry. Mm -hmm. I'm more the squished version, <laughs> so we all want to be tall. But we have another picture that I'd like to look at. Is that with your mom? No, that is actually the woman who was the honorary survivor for the mm -hmm. Little General Hospital Team Walk for Cancer Care. Okay. Um, we shared our year together representing the Team Walk, and um, Beverly Sieber is just an unbelievable woman, and she's actually gone through so many cancer related issues in her mm -hmm. life. She's lost a brother, she's lost a granddaughter, she's lost a daughter. So to be able to share that year, we really bonded immediately because mm -hmm. I had lost my mom and she had lost so much due to cancer as well. And she's also a cancer survivor. So her story wow. hit home. 
very wow. much, and she's a very special lady to me. Wow. Um, we have another picture. We have a few pictures. Oh, that's a fun picture. <laughs> that was a bridal show that I did with some of my sister queens uh, from a different system. Irene Races Alton and Wendy Jack. And, You're uh, like the... Charlie's Angel. Yeah, that's what we were doing. It was after the bridal fashion show, and Irene was Mrs. New Hampshire, America, uh, mm -hmm. United States, and Wendy was mm -hmm. Mrs. Massachusetts, United States. Wendy and I had actually competed together. That was a pageant that I did eight weeks after my daughter was born. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of fun to be able to share a year together and do the things wow. that we did and have fun events like that, a bridal show. We, mm -hmm. we all got to get married again and not have to go through all the logistics. So. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's what it looked like. And mm -hmm. Let's see another picture. That, oh, that's the girl. That is my love, Bella Tucker. Yeah, Bella. Um, she is just, I, I have not enough words to describe her and the inspiration that she's had in my life. And I know that she's touched so many with all the fundraisers that we've done and um, just being able to get to know her and her family. And I know with her family support, mm -hmm. she's just going to be able to get through anything and she's going to achieve great things in life. She's just absolutely amazing. I have a feeling she's helped you, that she's taught you something. She I has. She it. has. You know, it's don't take the little things for granted. Mm -hmm. And when you go through tough situations, mm -hmm. reach out and get the support that you need and just stay strong mm -hmm. and believe that you can. Because so many times when you go through difficult situations, you, you don't think mm -hmm. you can. You don't see that line at the end right. of the tunnel. You know, right. you don't you don't see that you can get through these tough mm -hmm. things. And just think of Bella. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Our little Bella. So we have one more, and that looks like you're in a parade. That was the 4th of July parade uh, in Chelmsford, my hometown, and that is actually my niece, Kayla, and it was great to be able to share that with her. Um, we, we had a lot of fun. It was a very hot day, but I got to meet so many people in my town. People who I actually graduated high school with were sending me emails on Facebook saying, we wow. saw you in the parade. Um, so it, it's pretty cool. It wow. was a great experience. That is good. And there was a lot of people that didn't even know that I was Mrs. Massachusetts in my community, um, my neighbors and things like that. So it was kind of cool to... You'll, you'll be a hit at your next reunion, <laughs> you know, your high school reunion. I know. So where do you see yourself going from here? I plan on trying to compete for another Mrs. Massachusetts, Massachusetts title mm -hmm. in April. Um, I'm working hard to get ready for that back into a little bit better shape. Um, I do that for myself, for my daughter, for my family. Um, and I don't think that my job is done uh, with the awareness factor that I want to put out there. Mm -hmm. um, there's still so many organizations that I want to work with and continue to support and talk about. So I think it would be great to have that microphone again, but regardless of whether or not I have the title, I, I've had You'll the opportunity, continue. but I'll continue to do the things within the community that I've already done and the friendships and the people mm -hmm. that I have as contacts. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter to have the crown or to not have the crown. It's opened up so many doors that have changed my life. When is your book coming out? <laughs> My book. <laughs> it sounds like you need one. You Thank need you. to write one. Definitely. Yeah. Um, it was great because I had a chance to write my adventures into a blog that I created. Um, and it, it was great because I had so many followers of it. And it was a lot of fun to be mm -hmm. able to document and then to look back on it and remember those times because life goes by so quickly. And to have a year to do something like this, it just flew by. And there's things that you don't remember. And you get to read that back to yourself and say, oh my gosh that's who I did that with that's what I did those are the people that I met and to see the pictures it's just amazing so is there any money any compensation in involved in being Miss Ma Mrs. Massachusetts? There are some prizes that you get. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a whole lot of money and that's not what it's all about for me. Um, for me it was a door that was opened. Um, I got to walk through it. It got to help me to heal from losing my mom and being able to talk about her. Um, when I started, it was very difficult to share her story. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's not about monetary compensation, it's about the rewards that I got out of it and to get the self-esteem and to be able to share my life, myself with others and hopefully help out in many ways has been the most rewarding aspect of it. What does your daughter think of all of that? 
I don't know. She's two and a half. Two, so yeah. I think she was pretty young to try to understand mm -hmm. what was going on. But I was but able now, to bring she, her. A bit? Um, she likes the jewelry. She likes the okay. dresses. I remember there was a dress that I tried on that I was going to wear to a pageant. And I came down the stairs and she was like, oh, mommy dress. Mm -hmm. And that was such a great experience for me because I remember I was like, wow, she really likes the dress. Um, but she got to meet a lot of people with me, and I have a lot of pictures included. What a great experience for her, really. Yeah, there, you know, my mm -hmm. scrapbook includes her, and down the road I'm going to be able to show her, you know, this is what you started doing. You started getting involved in the community at a very young age, and that's what I hope to instill in her, that volunteering and being involved in community is so mm -hmm. important, and we all have our challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, not everybody looks the same. Not everybody goes to the same background, but we have to treat each other as equals, and we have mm -hmm. to try to help each other out and to instill that in her in a young age is very important to me. As a parent myself, I want my kids to be proud of their mother. Yes. So just as we are so proud of them, you know, it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. And that I can imagine how proud she's going to be of you. I hope so. Oh, yeah. You know, Absolutely. I hope that I've, I open up doors for her mm -hmm. and make her understand what life is really all about because I think too many times we get lost in everyday life and it's the little things that really make a difference and help and I hope that I can make her proud. Very good. You have quite amazing stories. Um, before we wrap up our show, is there anything else, that, any message that you'd like to let our viewers know about? I think the biggest message is for people to be themselves and to go after their dreams because life is short. Mm -hmm. um, we're here for a visit and I think you never want to have regrets in life. If there's something that you want to do, go after that. Make your dreams come true. Um, always be positive about life and try to live it to the fullest because that's what it's all about. Well, that is, that is incredible advice and I really believe in that as well because, um, you know, anything could happen tomorrow. Yes. But you have touched so many hearts and you have accomplished what you're here to accomplish. We can't all be interested in the same thing. We can't all be interested in, in pageants or soccer or baseball. But we have to, as you said, follow our dreams mm -hmm. and live life to, the, to its fullest, definitely. Absolutely. So um, we really have enjoyed having you on Thank the you set. So much. And I hope that all of our viewers enjoyed today's show. And I would like to say it's a wrap.